As far as I know, since people are still arriving today, nothing is really happening until later in the afternoon, which includes registration. So, I'm thinking I may explore a bit, then watch the chaos unfold as 15,000 people show up to one hotel. I got something to keep me awake tonight. I think I'm gonna see them in front of I'm just trying to eat my cliff bar. For one weekend only, come watch the finest carpets flaunt the streets. <laughs> So fucking hot in Atlanta, and I'm weak. But air conditioning will save me. Pretty sure the population of this hotel has quadrupled since I've been out. Oh my god, that is awesome! Look at the eyes! registration last night so I'm gonna get there early today because I can already see the flock of people flocking like flying government spies. Oh my god they opened it early and nobody's here. <laughs> Maybe a situation where one of you holds up my laptop to everybody. I always know it's a certain tablet, so don't hide it. I let them borrow my laptop because we have been carrying on this brick all con for literally no reason. At least it wasn't for nothing. something, I think. Uh, regardless, still a ton of fun. For now, though, I'm probably going to chill, cool off in the room, um, watch some chaos unfold, then probably check out that dance slash concert area thing.
I haven't woken up this early of my own volition in a long time, but it's a big day. Dealer's Den opens at 10, then there's the Living Tombstone concert and Q&A, but first things first. Starbies. I've only got one day to explore the dealer's den, so I gotta make it count. is Yav Lando and Sam Holt. For those of you who don't know, these are the two artists behind The Living Tombstone. You may recognize them as the band responsible for a whole host of songs from Ordinary Life to Five Nights at Freddy's, the song about Five Nights at Freddy's featured in the movie, Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie. You know, this one. Anyways, they decided to make FWA 2024 their first appearance at a furry convention, and before their concert, they hosted a Q&A panel where they discussed topics like what it takes to make a song from motivation, and we just kind of like locked ourselves in a shack for a week, to rhythm drafting, 
To vocal drafting. We're waiting every night to finally drum and invite you comers to play with us for many years with me. Let's go, yo, up! Please let us get in, don't lock us away, we're not like what you're thinking. Slow down and reverb. Yeah. To putting instrumentals together. So this is by the way how I work on a postal descent where it's like melody first. Are important, but people gravitate much faster to vocal melodies. So I thought, alright, let's start from there and then come up with the lyrics. So it's almost the entire song, but then it's gonna be without the vocal. And so much more. Because uh, when I heard that kind of bouncing, like, boom, 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 I was like, oh, this feels like I'm like stumbling down the street after a party. <laughs> they even sampled some demos of upcoming songs, which I can't play in their entirety because they're not mine to share and I ain't messing with YouTube copyright. So this is all you get. I feel like I am not the Okay, so there's one song that I loved so much that I could do not. I have listened to the 30 second video I took about 30 times. Again, I can't play it, but apparently it's called Be Alone. It's supposed to come out as part of the Rust album later this year. Um, but if that's not the case, you at least get this. How do you guys like that song? They also discussed working on some secret projects, like being in the FNAF movie. Um, I wanted to ask, what was the process like for getting into the FNAF movie? Because that was absolutely Ooh. amazing. Um, so, it's a long process. So, so the process was as such. 2018, uh, Scott Gotham emailed, was like, hey, we'd like to put the song in the movie. That was 2018. And yeah, and we should point out, in 2018, FNAF wasn't even with Blumhouse yet. FNAF was with Chris Columbus at Universal, I think. Yeah, because of the change in production companies, the whole development uh, situation that they had with it took it a long time for it to come out, but we just had to be very, like, we know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, we had to keep that uh, uh, under wraps for, yeah, like, six years? Yeah. Five years? Yeah. That was probably hard, huh? Yes, it was. There was definitely at least one con where someone asked and we were like, maybe. <laughs> like, like close people, or like people who are close to us didn't even know. We just, we just had to be very secret about this. Yeah, yeah. And other secret projects. And actually, off the strength of that, we recently um, got involved, got asked to do something that is so incredibly under NDA that I don't even know how I brought it up. They even discussed collaborating with others. Have you heard of the jazz rendition of the FNAF song? And if so, what's your opinion on it? Oh, we both played on it. Yeah, like, like Charlie Rosen and the yeah. Big Band. No, no, no. But that's that's like we love the Charlie Rosen. Um, working with him has been amazing. And I should add Grammy winner Charlie Rosen yeah. and the Big Band. They won a Grammy this past year. It's unbelievable. Charlie is so incredibly talented. We loved. We ended up actually off the strength of Charlie making the big band FNAF one song. Charlie then made FNAF two, and then we got Charlie to make a big band version of our song from Zero One Animal, which we then got our friend Christina B to sing. There were even some wholesome moments. One of the things that would calm him was driving around for hours. I would drive him around, and he would be the DJ in the car. And y'all's songs have been such a part of that that I wanted to tell you that you guys save lives. <laughs> and I mean, it, I mean that sincerely. That, um, and so he's come a long way, and then he joined the furry fandom, and then it's like, y'all are here at FWA. Are you kidding me? This is so huge for all of us. And also, um, I don't know what it says about my parenting, but yes, we were the ones, I was in the red Honda minivan at Carpool, <laughs> and we would be screaming, I hope you die in a fire! <laughs>
Mark Nazi. Oh, so nice. Thank you. Uh, that's incredible to hear. Um, I need to stop talking or I'm going to start crying. No, yeah. Yeah. this was really start. nice. Uh, I mean, we came into it wanting to be saved ourselves. I mean, uh, I myself am a very nerd or virgin. You can tell by how I speak, but um, this helps a lot for me to communicate. I have a hard time speaking in public spaces, and the you fact that a I bad job. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, to, no, because it's the thing to perform. It's like you know the music. You can just follow along to what this is. It helps you. It's like it has a rhythm to it. So that's why I picked music in the end of the day because it's like my own form of communicating. So. This means a lot that it's reciprocated in a big way, so thank you for sharing that with us. It's really nice. Thank That's you. That's amazing. Thank you. And there were moments like this. We wanted to make a song about the way fascism creates father figures that make you <laughs> shake your butt. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a particular interest in music, but to hear what it was like to make these great songs from behind the scenes from the people who are super passionate about what they do was incredible. They also had a booth in the dealer's den and I was able to snag this photo with them afterwards, so that was pretty sick. That was actually amazing. Now though, I think I'm going to pop by the beach tree, because apparently there's a place with a ton of shops attached right to the hotel that I didn't know about. So I'm gonna get some food there and then get ready for the concert. I sit down for two seconds and Tom Holland forms a dance circle. Yes, Spider-Man, come back! <laughs> They were not kidding. The entire mall is directly connected to the marquee. Like, look at this. All the shops have Furbies all over them. Like, Caribou Coffee and Benny's. I'm gonna be laying down and just get you to cook the food. The chicken cats. The concert's coming up, so I'm gonna head back to the room, grab all my stuff, and, uh, Mentally prepare. Yeah. No, 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 you can do it. No, you, you don't do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, sit up. We'll meet you there. Remember okay. that Joel Osteen is with you. Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs>
This is the first time for us performing at a fur convention and we're not disappointed at all. Oh my god! I love the energy! Oh my god! The myths were true! Yeah. You should be. When I went to this con, I made sure to go in with a go with the flow sort of mindset. However, there was one goal I had, and that was to meet this guy, Zillion Ross. He runs a channel called Imaginatively Unimaginative, and he's been a big inspiration for me from art to engineering. And one of the main reasons I wanted to meet him was because he made a protogen base from scratch, and I had made a modification to it to allow space for a ton of electronics. I learned a ton from that process and wanted to show it to him. 
I actually ran into him quite a few times by accident for being 1 in 15,000 people, but I either wasn't able to build up the confidence or didn't want to interrupt, or I straight up just didn't have the protogen head with me. It was Friday night, I was leaving in the morning, and I was kicking myself because I was going to have to leave knowing I'd missed my opportunity, but by what must have been divine intervention, I was taking a time lapse outside of my room at what must have been 2 a.m. and I spot the man out of like 200 people. <laughs> so I grabbed the head, booked it downstairs, and after more confidence struggles than I care to admit, lads, we did it. And Zillion, if you're watching this, I am so sorry I probably looked like a creep. I actually just found out that he started a GoFundMe because apparently he's been going through some tough times. So if you're watching this and somehow don't know who he is, uh, go check out his stuff and his Kofi. I will have them both linked below. All right, goodbye. yourself who thinks he's gonna be a waste of money and kind of stupid. This is kind of fun. And it's important that this is a box. Is it alright if I sit back here? Good, how are you? You had it domestic or international? Uh, domestic. Which airline? Uh, United. You got it. Thank you. Fight. Stay Thank out of trouble. You. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Have a nice morning. You do the same. I never actually intended to go to this convention, let alone put this whole video and drawing together. It all sort of started as a Word document of potential travel plans and cost allocations after I saw that I could attend one of the biggest furry conventions ever, even if it was just for the first two days. And that set the wheels in motion. When I got there, at first I was completely alone, and even after some friends of mine arrived a day later, 
to whom I am incredibly grateful for showing me around. I felt out of my depth, and to find comfort, I took to recording as much of the convention as I could with my phone and my old hand-me-down Canon PowerShot, which survived the whole convention until, as I was leaving, I dropped it going through TSA and busted the screen. <laughs> It did its job though. Over the two and a half days of the convention I attended, my phone and camera recorded a total of 5 hours, 12 minutes, and 50 seconds of footage split across 268 files, of which only a fraction were able to be shown in this video. There's another reason why I recorded so much though. The creativity that I had seen sprawled out over this massive venue left me so awestruck that I had an uncontrollable need to capture every moment of it. I swear, if you saw me walking the Marriott, you'd see my head whipping and spinning back and forth, probably tripping over my own feet. With everything that I saw, it was so clear that, with the openness and allowance for vulnerability created by this community, each person was able to pour who they were out onto these canvases of all kinds. It made for this magical experience that I felt obligated to share, hence this video. If you're thinking about going to a convention, my advice would be to just start planning, even if it's just a pipe dream for now. And even if you aren't a furry, go to any convention, whether it be a mainstream comic convention or just something local. It'll leave you with a colorful new experience that I'm certain you'll never forget.